Hey guys, Recapcoon here. Today, I will tell you about a new fantasy anime called Vermel and Gold. The story begins at the Ortigia Royal Academy of Magic. We meet a boy named Alto Goldfield. He is told that he failed his summoning exam and that, if he cannot form a contract with a familiar by the next day, he will be held back a grade and forced to repeat the year. Alto meets with his childhood friend Lilia Kudelfet. She is shocked to find out that Alto may be held back a year despite him having perfect scores in every other class. Alto tells her he still has until the next day and will give it one last try. He heads to the library for help. A book falls off the shelf and lands on his head. To his surprise, it is an old summoning book. He takes the book home and follows the ritual written in the book. The summoning spell activates and Alto offers his blood. The summoning is successful and a naked demon girl named Vermel is summoned. They form a contract and Vermel kisses him to drain his mana. She attempts to seduce him, but he refuses and makes her put on some clothes. After that, Alto is confused why a demon would choose to serve him as a familiar. Because the demons they have learned about in history have always destroyed humans. She tells him that she was sealed away in the book and will serve him out of gratitude for setting her free. The next day, Alto presents Vermel to his teacher as his summon. She conceals her horns and tail to pass as a human. At first, he doesn't believe Vermel is his familiar because there are no records of humans being familiars. But Vermel shows him her familiar crest and he is forced to accept her and pass Alto. Lilia gets jealous of Vermel as she watches them from a distance. During class, Vermel sits on Alto's lap showing him affection. The teacher tells him that such behavior is not appropriate, which Lilia is glad to hear. But Vermel points out that many students have their familiars sitting with them and quotes the school's doctrine of living life alongside your familiar. The teacher is left speechless and Lilia has trouble accepting this. After class, Lilia confronts Alto. She doesn't like Vermel and challenges them to a duel. If she wins, Vermel will stay away from Alto, but if Alto wins, she will obey one command from him. They head up to a platform in the sky and their duel is broadcast to all the other students. Lilia summons her familiar, Sylphide, a high-class wind spirit, surprising Vermel. Lilia combines her wind magic together with her familiar and unleashes a powerful attack at Alto. Vermel steps in front of Alto and takes the attack head-on. When the dust clears, Vermel is completely unarmed. Vermel retaliates and uses magic which makes Lilia become so aroused that she forfeits. Since Alto won, he commands Lilia to be friends with Vermel. Later, Vermel tells Alto that Lilia is in love with him, but he doesn't believe her. She kisses him to replenish her mana and says she needs to or else she will disappear. She tries to seduce him once again saying that there are more effective ways to replenish her mana but he stops her and says kissing will suffice. The next day, everyone seems to be looking at them as they walk to school. Alto tells Vermel to keep a low profile so they don't stand out. Suddenly a dragon rampages down the path but Vermel stops it with a single flick, sending it flying into the horizon. Alto notices that everyone is staring at Vermel and scolds her for drawing attention to herself. The headmaster welcomes the students to their second year and Alto attends his various classes. Lilia is still jealous of how Vermel clings to Alto. After school, Lilia invites herself to walk home with Alto and Vermel, so she can keep an eye on them. They are confronted by two students, the owner of the dragon that Vermel defeated and his big brother Rex. They are here to get even with Vermel, but while they are distracted Alto sneaks behind them and traps them in a prison of crystals. Rex summons his familiar and breaks free. Rex is a fifth-year student and summons a dinosaur. Rex sends his familiar to attack, but Vermel supercharges Alto's mana, allowing him to unleash a far stronger crystal magic attack and defeat Rex. When they return home, Vermel asks what Alto wants in life. She offers to make him rich, but he tells her that he wants to be a great mage. He explains that in this world there are four ranks of mages, apprentice, bronze, silver, and gold, but he aims to go further beyond to become a platinum-ranked mage. Vermel approves of his dream and promises to help him achieve it. The next day, they and Lilia meet their friends Marx and Cheryl. Marx is from a noble family and is impressed that Alto defeated a fifth-year student, considering him his rival. Their teacher appears and tells them the headmaster has called to see them. 
The headmaster tells them that one of them will be the student representative. To decide who it will be, he gives them a special trial. Whoever can retrieve a fairy flower from the forest will be the class representative. Marx summons his familiar, a beetle named Francios, and rushes off. Marx is attacked by a man-eating plant and Cheryl stays behind to help him. The others continue to look for the flower and see it on top of a mountain. However, the entrance is guarded by a sleeping Cerberus. Lilia has an invisibility potion and plans to use it to sneak past the Cerberus. Alto is worried that the Cerberus would still be able to smell her, but Lilia points out that it has a cold so she should be able to get by. She takes the potion and becomes invisible. However, her clothes are not affected. Lilia panics about stripping in front of Alto, but she has no other choice. As Lilia approaches the Cerberus, Alto is reminded that it's a competition. Vermel tells him she can easily defeat the Cerberus but approaches Alto for more mana. Lilia tries to sneak past the Cerberus but not all of the heads are sick and she is detected. Alto distracts the Cerberus, telling Lilia to get the flower. As the Cerberus charges at Alto, Vermel appears from above and unleashes her demonic powers. There is a great explosion and Lilia is able to grab the flower. She brings the flower back down to the others. She admits defeat and offers to give it to Alto but her invisibility wears off and she becomes embarrassed and drops the flower. It gets blown away and ends up in Cheryl's hands. She wins the position and the others congratulate her. On their way to school, Vermel enjoys eating a crepe for the first time. Having been sealed away for hundreds of years, she never had the chance to experience modern food. The students look up at the sky as a formation of dragons fly over. All the students admire the leader of the dragon riders, Chris. Vermel asks Alto who they are and he explains that they are the dragon riders, the same club that Rex belongs to. At school they meet up with Marx, Cheryl and Lilia. Marx explains just how incredible Chris is. Aside from being the leader of the dragon riders, she is an executive on the student council and is one of the school's seven gold-ranked students. Alto is amazed she is already gold-ranked as a student. He wishes he could be like the student council president who is said to be close to platinum rank. Vermel tells him it's possible while suffocating him. Lilia quickly pushes her away and the two argue over Alto as usual. After class, Lilia vents her frustrations about Vermel to Cheryl in the change room. She wonders if Vermel is even human, remembering how she defeated the Cerberus with a single hit, something even a gold-ranked mage wouldn't be able to do. Lilia is suspicious of Vermel and swears to expose her. Cheryl picks up that Lilia must really like Alto, but this causes her to panic and be flustered. Cheryl encourages her to confess her feelings to Alto. Meanwhile, in the boys' changing room, Vermel makes a scene, following Alto in as all the boys are changing. Alto is embarrassed and Lilia is jealous Vermel got to peek at Alto changing. Alto tells them they need to keep a low profile so they don't get in trouble with the student council. Vermel tells him she will just beat them all and Alto will be gold ranked in no time. As they walk, the student council appears before them. The trio quickly gets out of the way. As they pass by, Chris glares at Vermel, wondering who she is. Later, Vermel sneaks into Alto's shower and attempts to seduce him once again. Rex gets beat up by Chris when she finds out he lost to Alto. She is embarrassed for him to be part of the Dragon Riders as his familiar is just a dinosaur and not a dragon. She continues to beat him and expels him from the Dragon Riders. Alto hears Rex was sent to the infirmary and visits him. Rex's brother blames Alto for being the reason Rex was expelled from the Dragon Riders. Alto realizes what happened. Soon after, Alto heads up to the dueling platform with Vermel. At the top, they are faced with Chris. Chris gives Alto a chance to back out of the duel, but they are determined to fight. Chris summons her familiar, as her dragon appears. Alto calls out to Vermel and she supercharges his mana, as Lilia looks on in horror. Alto launches his crystal attack impressing Chris, but she is able to stop it with a single blast of her magic. She fires again and Vermel is forced to block the attack. As the flames clear, Vermel is okay but has taken some damage. Chris continues with a rapid-fire barrage of fireballs. Vermel blocks all the blasts and drops to the ground. Alto tries to counterattack with his crystals but Chris shatters them all. Chris is impressed by Alto's skill but more impressed with how Vermel can take her attacks head-on. Vermel gives Alto even more of her power, 
allowing him to launch a huge barrage of crystals at Chris. The attack lands and there is a huge explosion. Alta is relieved it's over but Chris rises, riding on her dragon. She boasts that dragons are the ultimate beings and all others are inferior. She rains fireballs down from above at them, while Vermel continues to shield Alto and tells him to build up his mana. Determined to prove her wrong, Vermel supercharges Alto again and he launches a huge crystal attack. Chris shatters it but loses sight of Alto. Using the shards of crystal, Vermel leaps up to Chris. Before Chris can react, Alto holds a crystal to her throat and wins the duel. All the students cheer for Alto and he becomes popular with the ladies, causing Lilia to become even more jealous. One of the teachers, Professor Obsidian appears and lectures Alto not to take duels so lightly. He congratulates Alto on his win and leaves as all the ladies follow him. Alto asks Lilia if she is also into him but she is insulted by the suggestion. Chris meets with Rex and he is surprised she is doing her own chores. She apologizes to him but he is shocked to hear such words from her. Rex takes over the chores and the two make up. Later that night, Vermel tries to seduce Alto again, but he says one should only kiss someone they love, so she says that she loves him which shocks Alto. The next day, Alto worries while Vermel appears refreshed. Alto remembers Vermel telling him she loves him and turns completely red. He goes to see Professor Obsidian and asks if demons can fall in love with a human. Obsidian tells him that demons only want humans for their mana. During dinner, Alto confronts Vermel, asking if she only loves him for his mana. Vermel comforts him, she proves herself and kisses him without draining his mana. Vermel tells him he should try to kiss her but he can't bring himself to do it. The next day, Alto is happy having resolved his feelings toward Vermel. He apologizes to Professor Obsidian for his strange question about demons. But the professor is just happy to see that Alto is feeling better. Later, Obsidian meets with a female student in private. She tells him that she loves him and he embraces her. However, he holds a suspicious looking syringe. The girl is later discovered frozen in her room. The rumor of this incident spreads, the girl was rescued but left in a coma. The student council investigates the attack. The vice president Ryuga Shinuji and executive Jessica Schwartz discuss the incident revealing this to be the third incident of a student being put into a coma. Meanwhile, Alto measures Vermel because in class, they were tasked with writing a report about their familiars. Vermel gets undressed for Alto to measure her while Lilia's familiar spies on them. Lilia is outside his room with Cheryl and her familiar reports what it saw, and Lilia is outraged. Lilia has another invisibility potion and a copy of Alto's key. She leaves her clothes with Cheryl and sneaks into the boy's dorm. She unlocks Alto's door and sneaks into his room. Alto walks right up to her, causing her to panic but he just grabs a book. In his search for the right book, Alto touches Lilia without noticing, leaving her stunned. Alto completes his report, listing the things that Vermel likes, such as crepes. But Vermel adds to the list, writing down Alto's name. Meanwhile, Chris and her dragon are defeated by a seemingly possessed Rex and his mutated dinosaur. There is a flashback to when Rex first summoned his familiar as an egg. He is overjoyed at its size and it even attracts the attention of a young Chris. They bond over it and even become friends. In the present, Alto and Vermel are shopping for groceries. Vermel is attracted by the sweets but Alto tells her that they're short on money. Vermel is devastated and sits on the floor, throwing a tantrum. Alto gives in and tells her he will buy her one dessert. Vermel is overjoyed and smothers him as all the other students look on. She even kisses him, which causes Alto to be embarrassed. Vermel is confused about what the problem is, as she didn't even drain his mana. Suddenly they are interrupted by Rex's brother, who is in a panic and begs them for help. Chris continues to get beaten up by Rex. She tries to fight back, firing her fireball at him. There is a huge explosion but Rex withstands the flames as his body starts to mutate. Rex summons a pillar of rocks that sends Chris flying into the air. He steps on her face and taunts her to fight back. Chris begs him to stop. Alto and Vermel arrive, telling him to let her go. Rex throws Chris to the side and decides to get even with Alto for beating him before. Alto rushes to Chris and she tells him to run. Rex's power goes wild as Vermel recognizes something familiar about his power. Rex summons his familiar, which has also mutated. 
Alto's hand glows as Vermel prepares for a fight. However, the student council president Elena arrives, and with her sword familiar, she delivers multiple slashes on Rex and his dinosaur, knocking them out and destroying their mutation. Elena checks up on Chris but is ashamed that she lost Rex. Rex gets back up, but is too injured and falls over immediately. Chris rushes over to him as he lies, unconscious. Vermel is still curious about his power and Elena asks if she has knowledge about Rex's power, but Vermel denies knowing anything. The student council has a meeting. Noting this to be the fifth incident, they suspect someone is responsible, using drugs or black magic on the students. Chris can't bear the report and storms out. Jessica is confused why Chris cares so much about Rex. She hates it when people mess with things that are hers. Meanwhile, Alto and Lilia are notified about their upcoming exam to bronze rank. Alto is distracted but Lilia reminds him how important it is. Vermel tells Alto that she is tired and will go back to the dorm while he studies. She leaves and Alto is worried about her. She has been acting differently ever since their encounter with Rex. Lilia takes this opportunity to be alone with Alto, using study as an excuse. As Vermel walks back to the dorm, she meets Professor Obsidian. They have a brief exchange and he is surprised to see her without Alto. Vermel calls him out for being the one behind the incidents. Obsidian pretends not to know what she is talking about but Vermel mentions how she can smell low-tier demons on him. She warns him he should stop what he's doing and leaves, telling him that it's too much power for a human to handle. Obsidian asks if she will expose him. She doesn't care but just warns him to stay away from Alto. Obsidian realizes what she is and agrees that his demons are low tier compared to her. Vermel continues to walk away as a paper doll floats by. Suddenly Obsidian appears behind her and injects her with his syringe. She pushes him away but she begins to feel pain and dark energy begins to release. Obsidian watches sinisterly, hoping to obtain her. Meanwhile, Alto and Lilia study, as Lilia tries to make her move on Alto. Suddenly, Alto feels a sharp pain as his hand begins to glow. There is a huge explosion outside and Alto realizes Vermel is in trouble and rushes to find her. Everyone around the school notices the surge of dark energy. The sky turns dark and Elena rushes to the scene. However, she comes across a paper doll which she slices in half. The doll fixes itself and begins to talk. It continuously multiplies itself and joins together, forming a creature that says it can't let her pass. Elena fights with the creature, but after every attack, the creature is able to regenerate itself. Meanwhile, Vermel has transformed into an unstoppable winged demon. Obsidian looks on, overjoyed and gloats. With a swing of her arm, Vermel unleashes a devastating wave of energy, shocking even Obsidian. He uses his magic and wraps a magic chain around Vermel's neck to control her. As Alto and Lilia arrive, Obsidian shows them his control over Vermel, bringing her to her knees. Alto is horrified at the sight and Obsidian gloats about that he was the one attacking people and injecting them with demon essence to try to turn them into demons. Alto and Lilia are shocked at the revelation. At the thought of losing Vermel, Alto becomes enraged and a burst of energy is sent to Vermel. Vermel suddenly breaks the chain and lunges to attack Obsidian, but Alto gets in the way and gets impaled by her claws. Alto's blood pours out everywhere and there is a flashback to when Vermel was sealed away. She is all alone in the dark and nothingness, until a door opened up and she met Alto. As Alto falls, Vermel transforms into a more vicious form. She attacks Obsidian again, but she is stopped by Alto once again. He calms her down and she is brought to tears and reverts to her regular form. Alto collapses and Lilia is horrified. Vermel kisses Alto and is able to heal the hole in his chest. Obsidian freaks out at the turn of events and injects himself with his formula. He transforms into a hideous demon, gloating that this is his ultimate creation after feeding on hundreds of lower level demons. He plans to crush Vermel and absorb her power. He attacks with a drill punch but Vermel punches back, blowing away half his body with a single punch. Obsidian is shocked at her power and abandons his body to make an escape. However, he gets blasted by Chris on her dragon and Vermel jumps up to him and punches him, knocking him back down to the ground and his demonic body fades. Alto regains consciousness and Lilia cries, thankful that he is okay. The monster Elena was fighting retreats, saying they will meet again. 
Dromel apologizes to Alto for killing him, but he doesn't mind because she healed him and things turned out okay. However, Vermel sadly explains that she had destroyed his heart and to heal him, she gave him a demon heart and linked their life forces together. So if one of them dies, the other will die as well. Alto is devastated after hearing this, knowing that she will die with him when she should be able to live forever as a demon. Obsidian is arrested, and Rex wakes up from his coma with a sleeping Chris beside him and all the other students wake up as well. Later, Alto and Vermel kiss as Alto's heart now requires Vermel's mana to function. Vermel starts acting cold toward Alto, and Alto calls her out for it. She says that her monster form was her true form so he should be afraid and stay away from her. Alto gets angry, he says he doesn't care about that and kisses her. Vermel is shocked and pushes him away. Alto declares he is not scared of her and proclaims that they will be together forever. Vermel agrees with him and Alto becomes embarrassed and quickly runs away. Vermel is left thinking about how Alto said you should only kiss someone you love, realizing that Alto loves her, and she becomes flustered. The next day at school, all the girls mourn over the loss of Professor Obsidian, while all the boys are also depressed. However, they are sad because of Vermel, who hasn't been coming to class, to which Alto tells them that she hasn't been feeling well. Lilia confronts Vermel about being a demon, Vermel apologizes for lying and feels bad that Alto got hurt because of her, but Lilia doesn't care that she is a demon because she's not evil and her feelings for Alto are real. Lilia comforts her and says that she trusts Alto to keep her in check if she goes out of control again. Vermel returns to Alto's room and apologizes to him once again, but Alto is relieved she is feeling better and the two make up and kiss. The next day, Vermel gets a uniform to wear, but it just doesn't quite fit. Alto panics, feeling embarrassed but is happy that Vermel is back to joining him in class. Elsewhere, at a church, surrounded by bodies, we meet a platinum level witch named Helio and the ex-platinum warlock, Iolite. Using one of the paper dolls to communicate, Iolite talks about Obsidian's failure, calling him a fool, however, showing interest in his research. One of the priests lunges out, but he is batted away by a centaur familiar. Back at school, all the boys stare at Vermel's new look, and the boys praise Alto for bringing her back to class. Suddenly, the student council interrupts the class, and Alto and Vermel are detained. Alto worries that they've found out that Vermel is a demon. He asks why they were detained, and Elena apologizes for not being able to help during their fight against Obsidian. They want to know more about the incident, but Obsidian escaped from prison, so she brought them in to find out more. Alto agrees to help but Elena asks if they are hiding any secrets. They are held at Blade Point, and Alto has no choice but to confess that Vermel is a demon and that their life forces are linked. They are shocked at the revelation but Alto claims Vermel is not evil and is ready to protect her at all costs. Jessica thinks Vermel is too dangerous but Elena believes in Alto and decides to help keep his secret, noting that she can easily kill Alto if Vermel got out of control. She then invites Alto to be an executive on the student council. Alto thinks she just wants to keep an eye on him, but Elena reminds him how he was able to defeat Chris in a duel. Although suspicious of her motive, Alto accepts her offer. When his friends hear about this, they are shocked. Marx is proud of him and Lilia congratulates him. Alto becomes worried now that more people know Vermel's identity. He wants to get stronger so he can protect her. Vermel warns Alto to be careful around the student council suspecting that Elena might not be human. The next day, Alto goes to attend his first council meeting, but ends up walking in on the girls changing. Jessica freaks out, but Elena says it was their fault for not locking the door. The meeting continues and Elena shows them all a piece of the creature she fought with. Chris tries to examine it, but Elena explains that it contains such an advanced magical formula that a team of gold-level mages was not able to decipher it coming to the conclusion that their enemy is at platinum level. Meanwhile, Iolite and Helio meet with the creature's master, the platinum mage, Kohaku. They have been providing her with demon parts for her experiments. Iolite complains what a hassle it is to get the parts, noting how the high priest gave him some trouble. Kohaku asks if he was able to recruit the high priest, but Iolite reveals that he killed him. Kohaku is annoyed and Iolite takes his leave. He tells Helio that they are going after Alto and Vermel next. Alto has a dream of a young Vermel crying in a ruined city. 
He comes before a woman that tells him to choose between helping humanity or destruction, but saving Vermel. He suddenly wakes up, appearing shaken. He goes to study, feeling worried about his upcoming bronze exam. Vermel tries to reassure him, but he has been feeling pressure from the council to pass, especially from Chris. Vermel helps him to prepare, as she kisses him and supercharges his mana. The next day, Alto gets his things together for the exam. He sees the book that Vermel used to be sealed in, and wonders who was the one that sealed her, thinking back to his dream. He is called to go, and hurriedly, brings the book along with him. Lilia hypes them up for the exam, and the group heads off. They stand out from the students from other schools, as their academy is one of the most prestigious, with 50% of students passing, compared to only 10% from other schools. The students gather in a hall for their practical exam. There is a large crystal ball with a flame inside. The examiner tells them that this is a test to measure their mana, and all they have to do is pour their mana into the flame and strengthen it. The students are relieved at how easy it sounds, but Alto believes that there is more to the test. The first student is called up, but he fails to affect the flame. The next student with a ferocious bear familiar gives it a go, but also fails. It comes to Lilia's turn, and she shows them how it's done. She focuses on the flame and not the crystal and easily makes the flame grow, impressing the examiner. However, one of the other students is not impressed, and is able to do just as well. Following this, Cheryl passes and Marx just manages to barely pass. Alto is the final student and goes up with Vermel. Alto analyzes the crystal and figures out that it's easier to supply mana from behind. The examiner is impressed that Alto figured out the real test, testing how well a student can understand and decipher magic formulae. Vermel encourages Alto to show off and he agrees. He instead chooses the most difficult spot to supply mana. He pours his mana, creating a huge flame that turns silver. The examiners are shocked and Alto continues to grow the flame until the crystal cracks and completely shatters. Alto becomes mortified and apologizes for breaking the crystal. However, the examiner tells him that he passed with full marks. Alto celebrates with his friends, and the examiner notes how the crystal would have been hard for even a platinum level mage to break. Alto and his friends have a break for lunch, and Alto is a little worried for the written exam. Marx reveals his secret weapon, a six-sided pencil, which he says helped him get into the academy. Lilia wonders if anyone has gotten a perfect score on the exam, and Cheryl reveals that there has only ever been one person that has gotten a perfect score in every exam, up to platinum level. Vermel encourages Alto, and the group gets ready for the exam. Vermel pulls Alto aside to help replenish his mana, but this almost makes him late. As Alto walks, he passes by the rude student from the other school. In the bathroom, the student complains about Alto showing off during the practical. Iolite appears behind him, surprising him. The student dismisses him and tries to leave, but ends up getting killed as he bleeds and falls over. Iolite then steals his test ticket to sneak into the exam. Alto rushes to the exam and makes it just in time. Familiars aren't allowed in, so Vermel wishes them luck. Alto takes his seat and soon after, Iolite takes the seat beside him and wishes him good luck. Vermel waits outside bored, as she overhears how hard the test will be, but is confident that Alto will do well, knowing how hard he studies. Alto starts going through the test, but becomes distracted when he notices that Iolite has fallen asleep. Alto tries to ignore it and focus on the test. He sees that the questions are harder than in previous years. Iolite eventually wakes up and Alto worries that there is not enough time for him to finish. However, Iolite takes a look at the test and writes super fast, finishing the test in seconds. He looks over at Alto, mocking him for being slow. They get reprimanded for talking, but Iolite doesn't care, saying that no one will be passing. Suddenly, a guard rushes in, reporting the body of the student that Iolite had killed. They realize that Iolite is not a real student. There is an explosion, as Iolite summons an enormous stone golem. He says that he took the test for fun and reveals he is after Alto. The professor tries to fight, but gets crushed by the golem. Alto realizes that Iolite was the one working with Obsidian. The previous examiner bursts in and saves the professor. Vermel jumps through the window, attacking with her demonic magic, but it gets blocked by the golem. The examiner recognizes Iolite as the youngest mage to ever become platinum ranked, calling him a prodigy that outclasses every other mage. 
Lilia gets dragged out to evacuate, but when she tries to get back in for Alto, they find that the building is protected by warp magic that Helio casts to prevent them from interfering. Iolite summons a staff and alters his golem, giving it a number of cannons. Alto tries to attack but, the golem withstands all their attacks and blasts them all away. The building is destroyed, and Vermel gets grabbed. Alto becomes enraged, and his golden mana begins to glow around him. He unleashes a tremendous attack, destroying the golem. Alto's power continues to swell as he becomes a Super Saiyan, swearing to protect Vermel at all costs. Iolite becomes excited and summons more golems, but Alto easily takes them out, surprising Iolite. He powers up and lunges at Iolite, but ends up getting impaled by Iolite's knight. Alto asks what he wants with Vermel, and Iolite reveals his plans to use her demonic power to destroy the world. Alto breaks free, reaching for Iolite, but gets thrown to the ground. There's an explosion of energy as Vermel transforms to her demonic form to face Iolite, but she gets chained up by his magic. With this magic, he is able to seal her powers, reverting her to her human form. Alto keeps getting back up, so Iolite decides to just finish him off, getting his knight to fire a blast of energy. However, the attack is blocked, as the book Vermel was once sealed and floats up and opens. The woman Alto saw in his dream appears. She says she is the memory of the mage of the beginning, the one who sealed Vermel. Iolite tries to attack, but she freezes time and sends Alto into Vermel's memories. He finds himself 550 years in the past and sees a child version of Vermel happily playing. The mage of the beginning explains Vermel was raised by a nun, alongside some other orphans. They lived together like a family, and Vermel was happy. They knew she was a demon but did not care. One day, the townspeople learn that Vermel is a demon and blame her for a plague affecting the country, so they formed an angry mob and laid siege to the church. Her sister tells her to escape, and she almost makes it out of town, but she overhears the people saying they would kill her family. She runs back, but it's too late, and she finds that her family has all been hanged. She is devastated and the mob surrounds her. She loses her temper and goes into her demonic form for the first time, and ends up killing everyone and burning the town to the ground, leaving only a gigantic crater. Alto is appalled by what he had witnessed. The mage says this was her crime and the reason why she was sealed. Alto finds he can interact with Vermel and comforts her. She transforms into her adult self and cries that her crime can never be undone. But Alto tells her that he doesn't care and will always stay by her side. They kiss, and her chains are broken, as they wake up in the real world and he declares that he loves her. Vermel is freed from Iolite's binding magic. He's surprised she broke free from his mythical great item. Iolite summons another golem, combining it together with his knight. He says that Vermel's only purpose is to destroy the world. But Alto tells him to shut up, saying he doesn't know the real Vermel. He combines his power with Vermel and launches his crystal attack. It collides with the golem's attack, overpowering it and destroys the golem. Surprised at their strength, Iolite becomes more serious. He prepares his magic, but is stopped when Helio appears from a portal, saying she can't maintain the space warp for much longer. Iolite is disappointed, but has no choice but to leave. He tells Alto he will be back one day to finish what he started and escapes through the portal. The mage of the beginning appears again, surprising Alto. She calls Vermel a dear friend and urges Alto to care for her. She says farewell and repairs the building before disappearing. Lilia rushes in to Alto, glad he is okay. Later, Alto trains to become stronger so he can protect Vermel. He practices fencing with Jessica and martial arts with Chris. He loses to them both, but aims to improve. At night, Vermel thanks Alto for accepting her and tells him that she loves him too. Alto is happy, and they embrace. In a student council meeting, Elena says that after the recent incidents, they must protect the students and work together to stop any attacks. Despite knowing that they're up against platinum mages, they all agree. Lilia, Marx, and Cheryl receive their test results and celebrate that they all pass. But when Alto doesn't show up, Lilia jealously suspects he is doing something with Vermel. The two are fooling around in the open, with their love for one another and their determination to protect each other. But that's where this story ends. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.